Hello, how are you doing? Hope you're keeping safe, hope you're keeping sane. Um, yes, good to see you all again. Now, what I want to talk about in this video is actually a bit of a follow-up to my last video where I talked about gambling triggers, you know, those uh, detonators, I think I referred to them as, that ignite an urge that you might have sort of bubbling under the surface and actually make you go out and act on the urges and actually go and gamble. And quite rightly, so many of you commented and said the very, very obvious, and that is that... Yes, alcohol, loneliness, boredom, you know, grief, bad days, stress, all the rest of it. These can all be very valid and very powerful triggers which make us go out and act on our urges to gamble. However, as you also rightly pointed out, there is one trigger and one trigger alone that is more powerful, I believe, than all of these. And how I missed it in my last video is, uh, well, you know, my fault, maybe not enough coffee. Who's to say, right? And that trigger is gambling. Yes, uh, it sounds slightly paradoxical, but uh, I think if you are in the same boat as me, or you've been there and seen there and done that, or you know someone who is a problem gambler, you're very, very aware that gambling is by far and away the most powerful and the most consistent trigger to more gambling. Um, and there's, well, one primary reason for this, but I think there's also some others which I'll, I'll cover off today. One of the biggest problems we have as addicted gamblers, problem gamblers, however you want to label uh, current or former selves, is that we are almost innately unable to, or unable or incapable of accepting losses. And we do often misguidedly believe and put faith in the fact that we can somehow recover our losses through the very thing that got us into the problem in the first place. Yes, I'm talking, of course, about chasing losses. Now, chasing losses happens in kind of one of two ways, in a sort of a micro and a macro scale, if you will. Um, on a micro level, we've all been there and done that. We set out with the best of intentions to have a little gamble, don't we? A little punt. And in my case, that might have been, I'll put a quick 20 quid in the fob tea, or I might deposit a quick 50 pounds on the online casinos. And I'm gonna, what I'm going to do, I always told myself, what I'm going to do is I'm going to deposit 50 quid. I'm not going to deposit any more after that. What I'm going to do is deposit 50 quid in the online casino and I'm going to play slots on low stakes. Yeah, 20p, 10p, 30p, whatever, right? Whatever the low stakes was to me at the time. And the inevitable happens, doesn't it, of course? You know, that 50 quid very rapidly goes without too much of, a, you know, action, so to speak. You don't feel like you've necessarily got the, uh, the gambling, the satisfaction you wanted. You know, you haven't placated the urges and the cravings you had for a bit of a gambling session. So... What you do, you think, well, I'm 50 quid in. What I'm going to do is I'm going to deposit another £50. That will make it a nice round one. -er. And if I get back up to that £100 level, then what I'll do is I'll quit. So you deposit another 50 quid. And invariably, of course, you increase your stakes. Because you think, well, I've got to increase my stakes now, haven't I? You know, I'm behind. I'm, you know, I'm down on my money. So what I need to do is I need to increase the stakes. That will give me the chance to get my complete £100 back. Recover my loss. Leave it level. Everyone's a winner, right? And obviously what happens is that second £50 goes even quicker. So you think, well, I'll deposit another 100 and I'll try and get me 200 back and blah, blah, blah. And basically you end up chasing your losses. That is what happens on a micro scale. It does happen, like I say, on a much grander macro scale as well. That is an individual session where you've lost some money and you think in order to recover that money, you'll gamble some more money and you'll get that money back anyway. right? But it happens on a much bigger scale, like I say. We get ourselves into financial difficulties through this addiction okay and that can be minor financial difficulties such as having to say no to certain social occasions because you don't have this money to spare to go to you know spend on taxis or whatever or it must be or it might be much bigger you know much bigger scale financial problems you know potential bankruptcy or at the very least not being able to pay your mortgage or your rent or your bills or getting yourself into more and more debt and this is one of the most common side effects of a gambling addiction is of course you know, fiscal issues, you know, monetary problems. But for some reason, the gambling brain once again thinks the very same thing that has got me into this terrible, terrible situation where, you know, I'm not able to pay my rent or there's no food in the cupboard or I'm going to have to battle through somehow to pay day or beg, steal or borrow some money just to survive. The very problem, the very activity, the very addiction and behaviour that has got us into this terrible situation, we somehow believe we somehow calculate is going to be the very thing that gets us out of this situation so once again we start chasing losses but this time we're chasing historic losses 
we're chasing things that we've lost in the past in order to help try and bring us back to speed and not only financially I think we often make a big deal of the sort of financial implications of gambling but for me when I lost money I wanted that money back not necessarily because I even needed it you know there might have actually been for once disposable income it might be money that I could as they say afford to lose without any major impact on my life but I wasn't happy. I wasn't happy that I'd lost that money to a casino, to a bookie, to a fobty, to a fruit machine, whatever. Right? I wasn't happy with that. So I wanted for mental stability, I wanted to get back to point zero. For my own mental well-being, or what I believed to be my own mental well-being, I thought if I can get that money back, if I can get myself back to parity, if I can get myself back into the financial situation that I was at before I had this losing session of gambling or I made this stupid decision and acted on an urge that I shouldn't have because of whatever trigger, right? If I could get myself back to where I was, I would feel so much happier. And I've spoken before about this. I've spoken about how this actually, this mentality of getting level, of chasing your losses, was what led to the vast majority of my what I perceived to be gambling debt. I wasn't borrowing money and the vast majority of occasions I wasn't borrowing money from people from companies from whatever to facilitate my gambling I wasn't thinking right I really want to gamble let's go and tap my mate up for a couple hundred quid so I can go and have a gamble it wasn't like that for me the biggest problem was is that I'd go and gamble and I'd go and lose a couple of hundred quid and whether or not I could have afforded to have lost that 200 quid I could probably still see myself through to the end of the month I still had food in the cupboard I still had petrol in the car whatever but I wanted that £200 back and I would borrow it from somewhere. Beg still or borrow it from somewhere. Just for that mental parity. Just for the satisfaction of knowing, right, if I open my wallet, I'll have the same amount of cash in it before I did the gambling. So there was chasing your losses. Now the other thing I very want to quickly touch upon, which almost sounds paradoxical, and it's something that I don't think we talk about, but certainly from speaking to some of you guys is an experience you've had, is actually chasing your winnings. How many times have you, I know I've done it many times, you may not have done this at all, I don't know, I'm only speaking from experience, but how many times have you wanted to buy something? It could be something small, you might think, oh, I'll get a takeaway tonight. You know, you might want to buy yourself a bottle of nice whiskey or something to have in the cupboard. You might want to buy a new pair of trainers for 50, 60, 70 quid. Okay, so you've got the money, you could go and buy your takeaway, your whiskey, your trainers, whatever. Okay, but you think, no, what I'm going to do, and this is again the gambler's brain being fantastic at completely stitching us up, right? Is you think, well, I want to buy this, but I can't really justify it because it's uh, an unnecessary expense, it's a luxury, it's something that I can't really afford. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the bookies or go online or go wherever you, cho you chose to gamble, and you think, I'm going to win that money. And what will happen because I win that money, then I can use the profit I've made to go and spend on the, the luxury thing that I wanted. And what happens? Well, your your twenty pound you know bottle of whiskey you wanted to buy or take away or whatever ends up costing you a hundred pounds because you've chased this twenty pound profit going through the same process you did with chasing your losses. You start with twenty quid. You think, well, I'll just double my money. Doesn't work. Forty quid. Double. You know, anyway, and for the sake of not spending twenty pound because you didn't want to spend your stuff on no money or normal stuff because you want to keep your gambling pot, you don't you? You want to keep that pot of money in case you want to gamble. You think, well, uh, instead of just paying. £20 out of your disposable income, you've now disposed of far more of your income than you ever intended to, and you still don't have the thing that you uh, originally wanted to, to go and uh, go and buy. So yes, chasing your losses on a micro and macro level, very, very important, massive cause, massive trigger of us gambling. But also this desire to win things that we otherwise wouldn't purchase for ourselves. And when we actually dig down and we look at why we wouldn't necessarily buy these relatively small, often luxury items, is because we don't want to spend money that we've otherwise got earmarked for gambling. And again, that's the uh, the gambler's curse, isn't it, really? Um, thanks for watching, and thanks to all those people who commented and said, you know, Phil, you missed the you missed the biggest trigger of them all. You missed it out. And uh, you're absolutely right, I did miss it out. So uh, there you go. That That's covered what I believe to be genuinely the, the biggest trigger of them all. And this is actually, very quickly before I go, the reason that when I quit gambling, whilst like a uh, sort of five-quid acker on the football on a Saturday afternoon didn't seem like a big deal. I don't believe and didn't believe and, and probably genuinely still don't really believe that I had a, a real problem with sports betting, mainly because of the slow nature of the the, you know, the betting to the, the reward. Um, I, I did 
temporarily abstain, which turned into sort of permanent abstinence from that type of uh, that type of betting, because I think that actually a small financial loss could lead to that effect of trying to just recover that loss in a quick and easy way. So roulette, online casinos, whatever. Um, and I didn't want to go back down that path. So thanks for watching. Um, by the time you watch this video, I may have sorted out that membership thing I chatted about in my last video. Um, if you do want to sign up, you do want to um, support the channel and support me, I really, really appreciate it. If you don't, that's absolutely cool. I'll just ask if you can just hit the like button or whatever on the video. That sort of stuff helps out. You know, um, the most important thing is you're here, you're watching. Uh, hopefully you get something from these videos. Like I say, if you do sign up, of course it's appreciated. You know, I won't make any secret of the fact I would appreciate it. But if you don't that's absolutely cool just stay subscribed to the channel watch the videos you know hopefully you'll get something from them hopefully they'll help you in some small way or you can share them with someone who it might help out but um, until i speak to you again uh, stay safe stay sane uh, have a great day have a great week when it depending on when i uh, publish this video and i'll uh, catch you all in the next one cheers guys appreciate your support